God damn, does it feel good to be back. <laughs> new bar, new set, new topics, new cocktail book. Let's go roll that fucking intro. That's right, motherfuckers. I have an intro now. <laughs> I have been waiting to say that all week, trying, guys, I've been doing nothing but getting this place up and running, and it feels great to be back in front of a camera, my god. Hey there, hello there, my name is Michael, I am a private events bartender currently available for hire and a home mixologist, and today on our episode of Mike's Hard Reviews, we are gonna go ahead and take a look at a Prohibition era cocktail from this cocktail book right here, Gatsby Cocktails by Ben Reed. So this is a sort of a jazz age Prohibition era cocktail book, and it just struck my interest because I saw it at the store one day and decided, I'd like that. <laughs> Anything with an Art Deco appearance, I'm a little bit biased towards because frankly, it just looks really nice. <laughs> that said, I got it in the mail not too long ago and I've been flipping through it ever since. And there are a couple of cocktails in here that are particularly fascinating just because they feel very, very 20s. One of which is today's subject, the Silk Stocking, which is essentially a tequila brandy Alexander that uses grenadine. And that combination is probably pretty weird to you off the cuff. The Silk Stockings is actually a cocktail that doesn't have a lot of history behind it. As it turns out, it really doesn't appear in very many places outside of this book and in a bunch of old texts, old menus, stuff like that. There's no record of when it was first invented, no record of who first invented it, where it was first available for sale on menus. In fact, the only history that I could find about the cocktail itself was how it resurfaced in a 2009 bartenders conference and since then has been kind of like a niche favorite for some people, but outside of that, there's not a lot to say. Which is a little surprising because typically speaking, whenever there's some staying power for cocktails from the 20s, and or rather, you know, 20s pre, during, and immediately post -pro prohibition, you think that there would be some kind of trail to follow, but there's really not. I mean, it's been a thing people talked about and people found interesting and wanted to try, but for whatever reason, uh, it's not, not something that anyone knows any actual history about. If you got a lead, throw it my way. But uh, honestly, there's not much more to say historically. However, I'm kind of glossing over the thing that makes me want to talk about this cocktail. I mentioned that a silk stocking is basically a tequila brandy Alexander. And if you know what a brandy Alexander is, you're probably thinking that that's a super, super weird thing to say. A brandy Alexander is a combination of an aged brandy, uh, creme de cacao, and heavy cream or half and half milk, some kind of dairy uh, proportion. And it's meant to be sort of a nightcap dessert cocktail, very old school style. The notion of swapping brandy for tequila, especially an unaged, in this case, Blanco tequila, is probably super, super weird to most of you. And I would firmly agree. There's a couple different ways that silk stockings can be prepared. They all use Blanco tequila. And the one in uh, Gatsby cocktails is actually intended to be a flash blended, single serving up style cocktail. I get how that could help. A very large amount of ice being blended into the contents of the drink is gonna make it you know, nice and frothy and sort of emulate a smoothie at that point, just with tequila in it. Um, and that could work, but most of the other variations of this cocktail that do exist are entirely shaken um, and sort of cross that line between milkshake and and you know, dessert, dairy, drink. Uh, I saw one that had Nesquik in it of all things, which I, I'll link down below, but no, not doing that. Case in point, um, it's just weird. The way it's assembled is weird. And even weirder is that it uses grenadine. The thing is, it's entirely there for color. It's there to make the drink pink, which is sort of, I guess, appealing, but it defeats the point of doing anything with the color because grenadine is actually not a bad thing to use for the sake of having its flavor in this context. Think about it, strawberries and tequila, good combo. Strawberries and cream, great combo. Uh, chocolate and strawberries, great combo. And pomegranate, which by the way is the flavor of grenadine. Real grenadine is made with pomegranate. It's not close to strawberries, but it's a similar red berry and it could work just fine. So I don't know why it's built this way. <laughs> So what I've done is take a look at the original spec of the silk stocking, which is uh, two cups of ice flash blended into three quarters of an ounce of tequila, uh, half an ounce of creme de cacao, white creme de cacao specifically, um, heavy cream and uh, a teaspoon or a bar spoon of grenadine. 
and sort of reworked it into a full-size upstyle uh, variation of the Brandy Alexander, which we are gonna go ahead and make right now. Let's get started. We're gonna make a silk stocking. So we are going to make a silk stocking. Uh, we are going to make a single change to the recipe in terms of our ingredients. I want to embrace the notion that there's some berry flavor here. Berry, chocolate, tequila, cream, it can work. I think there's a implicit sort of functionality to it that will make it work. As a result, what I'm going to do is substitute the grenadine for a pomegranate liqueur called Pama. Now, Pama is actually made with pomegranate juice, vodka, and a small hint of tequila. It's a sort of specialized, um, very interesting, sweet, tart kind of liqueur. And as a result, I think it'll work perfectly in our silk stocking as a replacement for grenadine. So let's go ahead and get started. As a matter of fact, because I have it in my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and start with three quarters of an ounce of Pama liqueur. Gonna come behind that with three quarters of an ounce of a creme de cacao, preferably something with no color so that you're not going to mess with that sort of off red pinkish color we're going for. Next up, we're going to need one and a half ounces of a Blanco tequila. The nicer, the better, uh, but I do think that a more mild tequila is advisable here. There's something about the very strong, vegetal, peppery, very, you know, untamed agave flavor of a Blanco tequila that does clash a little bit with this flavor profile. Um, I personally am a huge fan of Camarena tequila, 100% um, agave and sustainably sourced, um, enough that they actually give a damn about their lot numbers still. If you're gonna go for something, get make it nice, but honestly, I think a Cuervo or here is fine, or actually, Go for a company that makes um, a decent cheap tequila, uh, Sousa Tequila. Um, this was the well tequila at the bar that I worked at in downtown Keizu, and people actually really enjoyed it. Um, and the people who drink it a lot somehow stated they never got hangovers from it. So, hey, reach for Sousa, I guess. Finally, our last ingredient, we're gonna go ahead and pour in a full ounce of heavy cream. Because we have that cream component in there, we wanna go ahead and froth this first with a dry shake in order to combine them and get that cream to properly sort of expand itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a dry shake, which means a shake without ice for about 10 to 15 seconds, like a normal shake, just to get everything combined and get that cream starting to uh, emulsify. Crack that back open, get that back in there. Man, what a fascinating combination. <laughs> We're gonna hit this with some ice like we always do. Just like before, that means one cube cracked and one cube whole. Pack that back up, tap it down, and then shake this for just about 12, 10, 12 seconds. You don't wanna over dilute it, otherwise that cream is gonna get kind of broken up and not as foamy. We're gonna serve our silk stocking up in a Coop style glass. Gonna double strand catch any ice chips. With that filled up, we can go ahead and talk about garnishes. What I like to do for these is I'm gonna go ahead and take some cinnamon and I'm just going to take that and just do a nice line of it down roughly the center of the drink just to give it a little bit of extra sort of presence on the nose, and it kind of lines up well with everything in there as well. Cinnamon, tequila, odd combo, but it works. Uh, and I think it kind of complements the sort of savory, berry, chocolate, cre sweet cream thing going on. It's pretty good. And finally, I'm sure you saw the bowl of them hanging out over here. When I first started the episode, I got some strawberries. I'm gonna go ahead and just split one of these down and perch that on the rim of our glass, like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a silk stocking. So with our station cleaned up slightly, let's go ahead and give our silk stocking a taste. Cheers. <laughs> oh man, that is so delightfully odd. <laughs> the sort of presence of the cinnamon on the nose really lingers on your face and it, it doesn't necessarily complement anything in there, but it's a nice set of spiced contrast to everything. It berries cinnamon, chocolate cinnamon, tequila cinnamon, these things can work, but collectively, the cocktail itself is so distinct from any one of its individual ingredients that the salmon is kind of like, oh, waking you up and it's it's in your face and in your nose and and and, and just lighting everything up. And it it's a lot of fun, uh, but 
when you get down to it, the way it rolls into the flavor is it kind of takes this sort of spiced presence and fills your, you know, your, your, your olfactory senses with it. And then this sweet cream and chocolate and berry with this really fun vegetal note behind it from the tequila comes in and swoops it away and clears it out. And even as I'm sitting here talking, it's sort of evolving and bringing out more like a, a fresh berry kind of flavor. It's, it's stunningly effective at being an honest version of a Brandy Alexander that is not exactly the same as that. Everything works, but it's not like perfectly executed. <laughs> it's odd because to me, it's screaming um, tequila rose, which is like a strawberry, uh, chocolate strawberry flavored, like tequila based liqueur, I think. It's it's really presenting that way, but it's just like, it's, it's on the cusp of being exactly what it needs to be. It's so close to being like combined in the right way, all these flavors that are like close enough to work together, but aren't quite combined right. It's, it's just very close to being exactly what it needs to be, but it's not quite there yet, I suppose. <laughs> it is an absolutely delicious cocktail. And one that I think is actually, you know, worth having around nowadays, especially for the summer months. It's an interesting, it's an interesting, drink, it really is. Um, I think uh, maybe an Añejo tequila or a Reposado would work a little better. They jive, you know, the tequila, the, the agave flavors of the tequila would be a little, a little pulled back and a little bit more oaky and charry and vanilla-like, but hey, honestly, I'm going to enjoy the absolute hell out of this this afternoon, so. <laughs> So we are coming to a close on our first episode of the show in the new bar space. Hopefully you guys are liking the way that this looks and everything is looking okay. The new camera is um, a new, the side camera is a little little weird. Gonna have to figure out how to make that work. But um, <laughs> it's all started. Like always, we're gonna end with a reading from our Crisp Toast uh, Toast book by William Evans and Andrew Frothingham. We skipped ahead to the second section on accountants, which was surprisingly funny. Today's toast is read as such. Here's to my accountant, the person who tells you what to do with your money after you've done something else with it. Cheers to the man who comes in just a little bit too late. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode on a 1920s classic that we are going to revisit in Tuesday's episode with a bit of a modern spin. If you did, go ahead and click that like button down below and subscribe and click that bell notification to be told whenever the next episode comes out. As always, the show is going to be made every single Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays to keep your eyes and ears peeled for new videos. You can follow me on all of my socials that are appearing on the screen right now in a new graphic. I don't know if you noticed, I'm adding new graphics and putting pictures and stuff up. It's fun, it's fun time. <laughs> Thank you all again so much for watching. I am so glad to be back in front of the camera making the show. Um, the past two, three weeks have been a pain in the ass with moving and then being sick, which I'm not, <coughs> I'm not fully, fully over yet, uh, but fuck it, I need to get back to work. So <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. You guys have a great rest of your day. Remember to please drink responsibly and I'll see you around. Have a great day.